you are able to uh, see the screen right yeah it's visible A very heartedly good evening to one and all present here. I, Chaitanya Gupta, feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all of you. The National Services Scheme, NSS IIT Roorkee, is a student chapter of NSS, a public service program run by the Government of India. We are a team of over 1,000 active and dedicated members having a common goal, striving for the betterment of the motherland by fully indulging ourselves in the service of mankind. We organize multiple events, campaigns, and guest lectures to spread awareness about the societal issues. We work for the betterment of the society following our motto, not for me, but for the nation. One of the significant issues we are currently focusing on is road safety, which is becoming a significant cause of deaths and accidents in India and the world. To aware people about this, NSS IIT Roorkee is celebrating the Na National Road Safety Month 2022 from 22nd January to 21st February 2022. Today, we are here to witness a live session by Mr. Elvin Tharkan on introduction to IREP star ratings and safer road investment plans. On the behalf of our whole IITR community, I would like to thank and extend every of a warm welcome to our speaker from today, Mr. Albin Tharkan. Albin Tharkan is a road safety engineer with the IREP and India Rep. He is associated with program since 2018 and has been a part of several IREP assessment projects and training programs within India and abroad. Previously, he was worked with companies like Ramball India, Feedback Infra, etc. Elvin is a great graduate in a civil engineering from uh, with post-graduation in transport planning from School of Planning and Architecture, New Delhi, and has a professional experience of over 10 years in the field of transport engineering planning and road safety. We believe in presence will have profound impact on the participants and attendees and will inspire them. So, Without wasting time, I would like to invite Mr. Elvin Tharkan for the webinar in the introduction to IREP star ratings and safer road investment plans. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gupta, for the kind introduction. Uh, it's a privilege to be associated with the National Service Scheme, IIT Roorkee, and to be part of the National Road Safety Month 2022 program. So once again, greetings to all. Uh, and uh, in this session, uh, we'll discuss about what is IRAP and uh, what is IRAP star rating, how an IRAP assessment is done to prepare star rating and the safer roads in investment plan. Then I'll take you through a few examples and case studies of uh, star rating and investment plan. And also we'll discuss on how this methodology 
can be used at academic level for your projects, thesis, research, etc. And also uh, towards the end, we'll keep some time for further discussions. So about IRAP, uh, IRAP or International Road Assessment Program is a registered charity dedicated to saving lives through safer roads and are currently active in more than 100 countries worldwide. So what uh, IRAP does is we assess road user risk and promote safer road design. We inspect high risk road and develop star ratings and safer roads investment plan. We provide training, technology and support that builds and sustains national, regional and local capability. And uh, IRAP model is overseen by a uh, global, uh, global technical committee that uh, consists of leading road research agencies around the world like uh, TRL in the UK, then uh, ARRB in Australia, Myros in Malaysia, etc. And also IRAP is the umbrella organization for several self governing programs such as EuroRAP, Australia RAP, China RAP, India RAP, etc. So uh, in uh, 2000, 17, we have uh, officially launched the India RAP or the Indian Road Assessment Program, and uh, it is uh, hosted by Asian Institute of Transport Development uh, based in New Delhi. And uh, uh, even though it was officially launched in 2017, uh, IRAP is present in India since 2010. And uh, so far, we have assessed uh, the safety of over 25,000 kilometers of urban roads and uh, national highways and state highways in uh, different states, uh, working with uh, Ministry of Road Transport, uh, State PWDs, National Highway Authority of India, uh, local consulting firms, World Bank, etc. And uh, uh, even now, uh, uh, assessment of around um, 2,000 kilometers are uh, in progress. So, uh, uh, coming to uh, the basic program philosophy of IRAP. So, there are three key guiding principles in the IRAP uh, philosophy. So, firstly, that the road fatalities are a huge health issue and crashes are leading killer of young people worldwide, but they are largely avoidable. Secondly, that people make mistakes and good road design can help reduce such uh, reduce the severity and outcomes of such mistakes which would occur. And through uh, good designs, a large proportion of these fatalities and uh, serious injuries which would occur can be prevented. And thirdly, targeted interventions to improve existing roads have a very good economic payback that is in terms of the economic value of lives saved and the serious injuries prevented. So coming to what is star rating. So star rating is based on road inspection data. It is a simple and objective measure to uh, uh, objective measure to uh, whether, uh, whether to measure the level of safety uh, which is uh, built in to the road. Star rating is uh, done on a scale of one to five star. Five star roads means the uh, like safest and one star means the poorest. And star rating can be completed worldwide in all types of roads in urban environment, rural environment, without reference to detailed crash data. So, you, you know, we know that uh, uh, very often that uh, uh, crash data is not very readily available in uh, developing countries. We might get the total number of deaths and fatalities, but still with a lot of under reporting. And also it is very uh, difficult to get detailed crash data, like how many are uh, a particular road user and what is the actual cost of that accident and um, how uh, uh, such uh, a particular crash type can be afforded. So this detailed crash data, uh, we don't get very often. So here, uh, star rating or the IRAP methodology is a proactive approach. So here we don't need detailed crash data to uh, assess a road uh, or to get the uh, star rating. So this is basically a proactive measure which assess the infrastructure built into a road and see what are the potential risks possessed by the infrastructure and what are the possible crashes which would occur. So that's about uh, star rating and uh, we know about sustainable development goals. So uh, under 3.6 of SDG, uh, it says that by 2030, we should bring the deaths and serious injuries to half. So UN member states have agreed on 12 global road safety performance targets to make this possible. And out of the 12 uh, targets, target three and four talks about road engineering measures. So it uh, particularly mentions uh, by uh, target three mentions uh, by 2030. So all new roads should achieve technical standards or a three star or better rating. And target four is about 
uh, existing roads uh, that 75% of the travel on existing road should meet the technical standards or should achieve a three star or better rating. So, so far, uh, several countries have adopted this uh, uh, target. Some have set it even higher. Some countries like UK and all has set it to be like 90 that uh, they'll achieve 90% of the travel uh, to be three star or better and uh, so on. So India also being a even member country uh, uh, has uh, the responsibility to achieve uh, this target. Uh, so coming to the uh, IRAP star rating methodology. So this chart uh, shows how uh, star rating is done. So we can see it's broadly divided into three groups. First is data collection. So it has uh, again road inspection, data coding, supporting data uh, collection, etc. Then next stage is uh, processing the data in an online software called VIDA. So VIDA is IRAP's online software. So VIDA means uh, life in Spanish. So uh, this is a life saving software. It's given this name. And uh, the third stage is uh, implementation. Uh, so where uh, the treatments uh, identified will get implemented. So before going into uh, like uh, further detail, uh, so we uh, let's start with the fundamentals or the building blocks of IRAP model so i'll come back to this slide again so uh, so to uh, better understand how uh, crashes happen so so this uh, particular slide has different road users you can see uh, there are uh, cars there are let me just switch on my pointer so uh, there are uh, vehicles uh, like four wheel vehicles are there pedestrians are there bicyclists are there motorcyclists are there and also uh, there is a straight road section we can say and also there is an intersection there where there are there's a vehicle coming out from the intersection this is a like, very uh, typical situation which we uh, see every day where uh, all the different uh, road users are present so uh, here uh, for example uh, this particular vehicle vehicle number 1 this car so one possible uh, crash type is that uh, this car can lose control and run off the road. So it can run off the road either to the left side or to the uh, right side. So if it is running off to the left side, uh, it can go and hit a tree or some object there, or it can hit a person which is walking on the road, a pedestrian, or it can hit a bicyclist. And uh, if it is going uh, run off to the other side, to the right, uh, it can hit an object on the other side of the road or even can end up in a head-on collision with the car which is approaching in the opposite direction. Uh, so uh, another possibility is uh, the vehicle number two uh, in an attempt uh, when it makes to overtake the vehicle in front of it can end up in a collision with the car with a, uh, any with any vehicle which is coming from the opposite direction. This is another possibility. Then this risk is again uh, uh, is uh, possible with motorcyclists also so all this overtaking and run off risk is possible with motorcycle and another risk which motorcyclist has is like a motorcycle can get hit while they are riding along the road by a larger vehicle and uh, at intersection uh, there are vehicles coming out from the intersection this uh, vehicle coming out from the intersection can end up in a crash with the vehicle uh, traveling on the uh, main road so that is another uh, possible crash type and coming to pedestrians and bicyclists, a pedestrian walking on the road can get uh, hit uh, and a pedestrian can get hit while crossing the road and again he can get cross, uh, get hit while crossing the main road and also while crossing the side road or the intersecting road. And same uh, with a bicyclist, a bicyclist can hit while uh, the person is riding along the road or uh, can hit while negotiating at an in this section or uh, uh, another possibility is that the bicycle can uh, lose control and run off the road and can hit some object or uh, fall into a pit or something like that. So these are the uh, different uh, types of crashes which are uh, possible on a road. So uh, IRAP uh, methodology is uh, like built on the uh, possibilities of different crashes or uh, how a crash can get initialized and what all are the potential outcomes of a crash if it happens. So a uh, bit more uh, deeper, uh, if we see uh, how the runoff crash happens, so the same vehicle uh, which we have seen in the previous slide. So uh, if this car runs off the road, there are two possibilities. It can run off, to, off the road either to the left or to the right. So that's the crash initialization stage. So the vehicle has just lost control. So it is running off either to the left or to the right. So what are the possible 
potential outcomes. So if it is running off to the left, it can run off the road and hit some object on the side of the road. And another possibility is if there is some space, he can, the driver can recover and come back to the road. If the vehicle is running off to the road to the other side, to the right side, there are three possibilities. So one is to regain control and recover. Second is run off the road and go and hit an object on the other side of the road. And third is if there is a vehicle on the opposite carriage, opposite uh, lane, it can uh, <coughs> have a head on collision with the uh, vehicle approaching from the other side. So there are three possibilities. So uh, these are the uh, different crash types possible with the different road user groups. Uh, so here uh, I'm only showing the crash types which can be tackled through engineering measures. There are even more crashes which uh, cannot be addressed through uh, like 100% through engineering measures, but these crashes can be uh, addressed to some extent, at least through engineering measures. So for vehicle occupants, the crash types are runoff to the driver side. Driver side means uh, to the right side. So in India, so we uh, the driver sits on the right side of the car. So driver side is the uh, right hand side of the vehicle, and uh, passenger side is the left hand side of the road. Uh, so right hand side and left hand side. So runoff to the driver side, runoff to the passenger side, then head on due to loss of control and head on while overtaking. Fifth is intersection crash. Sixth is crash at property access. Property access is nothing but uh, uh, a small scale intersection uh, like a property uh, or a, uh, uh, land, uh, a land use uh, near to the road from where vehicle will access the road. So it's similar to an intersection, but in a smaller scale, it can be a petrol pump or a commercial building or even a residential building. So all these crash types are possible with motorcyclists also. And additionally, there is an along crash, so which is also possible. So uh, motorcyclists can get hit while riding along the road. And for pedestrians, uh, they can get hit while uh, walking along the road, while crossing the main road, or while crossing the side road or the intersecting road. For bicyclists, runoff crashes are possible, then intersecting crashes are possible, and also uh, uh, they can get hit while riding along the road by a vehicle traveling in the same direction. So these are the different crash types. So uh, now we have uh, seen what are the uh, different crash types. So uh, in order to arrive at a star rating, so we need to quantify the risk. So what risk? So risk associated with all the different crash types. So uh, this is the uh, like uh, basic formula which we use to calculate the risk. So here it says star rating score equal to likelihood into severity into external flow influence into operating speed. So star rating score or in other words, it's the risk score. So higher the score, risk score, higher will be the risk. So it is a product of a factor of likelihood, a factor of severity, a factor of external, external flow influence or the traffic. So basically it is the traffic. So higher the traffic, higher will be the risk and into a factor for operating speed. So speed is very uh, like key uh, in terms of uh, road safety and uh, risk. So it affects both the likelihood and severity of a crash. So that for that reason, so it is keep, uh, kept as a separate uh, uh, item in the formula. So uh, so what is uh, likelihood? So uh, this again, this uh, vehicle which is running off the road. Uh, so I have a question. If uh, I don't know if uh, participants are allowed to unmute and speak. Uh, so uh, the question is, what are the road attributes that affect the likelihood of a runoff crash? So uh, here we can see a vehicle, if the vehicle runs off the road, uh, for, a, for this vehicle to run off the road, what are the uh, infrastructure attributes of the road which affect the likelihood for the vehicle to run off the road? Interception of animals. So he, no, here we are actually uh, speaking only about runoff crash. So intersection uh, crashes are like dealt separately. Runoff crash means the vehicle lose control, like with the vehicle going straight on the road loses control and runs off the road either to the left or to the right. For such a crash to happen, what are the factors which affect the likelihood, or or what are the factors which make which will make it more likely for a runoff crash to happen. 
breakdown of vehicle sorry could you come again breakdown of vehicle your yeah, breakdown of vehicle uh, again uh, not completely so if there is a vehicle broken down on the road which would affect another vehicle to run off the road so that is a possibility but uh, again uh, we don't have any uh, engineering uh, intervention like road engineering intervention to uh, tackle that uh, so uh, so the factors which affect the likelihood of a runoff crash to happen are lane width curvature quality of curvature delineation presence of shoulder rumble strips road condition gradient and skid resistance so uh, if the lanes are wider the likelihood of a vehicle to run off the lane is less if there is a curvature then due to this uh, centrifugal effect we know uh, there is a higher chance for the vehicle to run off the road then quality of curve if the uh, curvature is uh, not properly uh, delineated without any uh, without proper signage chevron signs and all the, again the chances will be higher likelihood will be, likelihood will be higher and for this delineation if delineation is good the chances of the vehicle to run off the road is less presence of shoulder rumble strips so shoulder rumble strips are uh, textured lane marking it's also known as audio tactile lane marking so uh, it's like a small uh, bumpy uh, marking so uh, along the edge line and the center line so there will be a uh, small uh, bumps so once the vehicle runs on the uh, lane so it will give a vibration effect and uh, it will alert the driver to uh, come back to the uh, lane so if uh, shoulder rumble strips are present likelihood is reduced then road condition so if there are potholes or anything uh, the chances of the driver to lose control and run off the road is higher then gradient or the vertical gradient if uh, gradient is there run off chances are high then skid resistance if uh, the road has proper traction and good skid resistance the chances of a vehicle for a vehicle to run off the road is less so that's about uh, the likelihood next is uh, severity so if a runoff crash happens so what are the attributes the road infrastructure attributes which affect the severity of a severity of the runoff crash so that is if the uh, runoff crash happens what is going to be the outcome so if uh, is it going to be an injury or is it going to be a, a, a fatality or a minor injury or like no injury so there are some attributes which affect the or which uh, uh, decide the outcome of a runoff crash so if a crash happens how severe it will be so what are the factors which decide that uh, so uh, these are the factors which affect the severity of a runoff crash so one is roadside object so if there is a uh, the uh, object present the type of object will decide what is going to be the severity of the crash the object can be a tree it can be a street light pole it can be a metal crash barrier it can be a concrete crash barrier it can be a cliff so there can be uh, different objects so the severity of a vehicle hitting a tree or a pole is higher compared to the severity of a vehicle hitting a metal barrier or a uh, concrete safety barrier so object is one attribute which affect the severity of a runoff crash second is distance to the object so uh, next we should see how close is that object to the uh, edge of the road if it is like uh, one meter away it's going to be more severe compared to uh, the situation where the object is like five meter away or 10 meters away so more the distance the vehicle uh, will get some time to slow down or uh, uh, and uh, likewise it will the severity will be reduced and third is paved shoulder width so if there is a paved shoulder present uh, it is giving some more space or some more space with good traction for the vehicle to slow down or to uh, uh, like divert or uh, recover so uh, third is width of paved shoulder so now uh, we have understood uh, what is likelihood and what is severity with an example for the uh, runoff crash so coming back to the formula so now i think you better understand uh, this formula so star rating score is the product of likelihood factor with severity factor and external flow influence factor and operating speed factor so for every crash type 
this star rating score is calculated. So every crash type has some attributes which affect the likelihood, some attributes which affect the severity. Then uh, we know the uh, traffic on the road, then the operating speed. So product of all these factors will give the star rating score for that particular crash types. So all the risk scores, so individual item wise, crash type wise risk scores are available uh, for reference on uh, IRAP website. So there are uh, methodology and uh, uh, specification documents available. So if you're interested, you can uh, refer. Also, there are uh, worked out examples uh, how the star rating score is calculated and how star rating is derived from that. So this is the uh, formula for just one crash type. So for all the crash types together, we have this large formula. So the total star rating score for vehicle occupancy is the sum of the star rating scores for the different crash types which you have seen, including runoff crash, head-on, uh, uh, intersection crash, property access, etc. And for each crash type, there is a likelihood, severity, operating speed, and external flow influence factor. And these are the factors which affect the likelihood and severity of this particular crash type. So this is the formula for vehicle occupants, and this is for pedestrians. And also we have a similar formula for uh, motorcyclists and for bicyclists. And now we have the star rating score. This star rating score is a number which is converted into star ratings. So this table shows the uh, band for which the star ratings are assigned. If this for vehicle occupants, for example, if star rating score is between 0 and 2.5, it's a five star road. If it is between 2.5 and 5, it's a four star section. Then if it is between 5 and 12.5, it is three star. 12.5 to 22.5 is two star and any score more than 22.5 is one star. So generally we say uh, one and two star as uh, high risk and uh, three, four, five us like lower or moderate risk. So uh, now you have understood uh, the basics of IRAP star rating, how this star rating score is calculated or how this risk score is calculated uh, using the, uh, the severity and likelihood factors of different crash types and how uh, different road attributes are associated with the risk. So to make you uh, understand better, the benefits of star rating or uh, what more does star rating tell us about the risk of a road. So I have an example here. So in this image, you will uh, see different roadside objects, different hazards. You can see a pole standing on the median. On the left side, there are some broken pieces of uh, concrete barrier. There are parked vehicles. It's not a straight road. It seems to be a moderate curvature. Then there is a merging intersection present here. Again, it's not of a good quality. So uh, proper delineation markings are not there. So uh, road condition also doesn't seem to be that great. It's little, uh, uh, some potholes are there. So uh, overall, this is not a very uh, good situation. This is uh, a national highway. Uh, then we have another situation here. So in this ro road segment, this one also looks little similar to the previous one, except that the roadside hazards are different here. Mostly uh, the trees are present and there are no parked vehicles. This is more of a rural uh, environment and still uh, road delineation is not adequate here. So how do we compare the level of risk in these two different situations? So earlier one was urban. The traffic can be different. Speed can be different. Uh, roadside objects are different. Uh, presence of uh, multiple road users are uh, different. The intersection is not present here. So how do we uh, compare the uh, risk of these two different images? So surely we can uh, write a paragraph describing this, but how do we quantify it? So that is where uh, star rating helps. So uh, star rating gives us a way to define the level of risk quantitatively, considering the operating speed and the traffic volume. So here you can see uh, this uh, is a road. Uh, I think this is connecting in, uh, New Delhi and uh, Chandigarh. Um, it's on that highway uh, somewhere near Karnal. So here the operating speed, so measured operating speed is uh, 95 km per hour. Then uh, delineation is poor. There are unprotected safety barrier ends present. So there are vehicles parked. Uh, that's a moderate horizontal curvature. Then there is a poor quality merge lane in the section. With all these attributes, this particular road segment is getting a one star for vehicle occupants. And the other image, so here 
uh, this is a undivided road. So a previous one was a divided road. There was a physical median. So, uh, there was there is no head on overtaking risk. So some vehicle can lose control. I'll again go back to the previous image. Some vehicle can lose control on the other carriage and come to this carriageway, or this one can go to the other carriage and end up in a head on collision. But while overtaking, a head on collision won't happen. So one risk is not present in this particular one. But the next image here, this is an undivided road. So only a center line type of median is there. There is no physical separation between the uh, two different uh, directions of traffic, but the speed is different. It is a rural environment. Then there are roadside objects like trees, moderate curvature is present like the previous one. Then lane widths are lower in this one. Then there are no paved shoulders. Delineation is poor. Then the payment condition is adequate here. So with all this, this particular road section is getting a two star for vehicle occupant. So now we are able to compare the risk in two different situations. And so if we have a larger network, let's say a 10,000 kilometer network, which you are assessing in a country. So with this, we can identify which are the high risk sections or high risk segments, which need uh, prior uh, attention or the utmost uh, attention uh, for uh, like road improvements and all. So this is a quantifying method, which compares the road attributes uh, and arrives at a star rating for different road sections. So coming back to the IRA process. So uh, as we have seen broadly, uh, it has three st stages. So first is data collection. So data collection involves collection of video or images and GPS coordinates. So a survey vehicle is run on the road to collect the images or video of the road segment along with the GPS coordinates. So if we are assessing uh, 100 kilometer, the vehicle will run on the 100 kilometer road and capture the images at uh, set intervals or continuous video, uh, which is tagged with uh, GPS. So that's the first step. Then uh, this data is brought to office and it is coded into an IRAP standard format. So this uh, looking at the video, train coders will extract more than 50 attributes for every 100 meter segment into a standard IRAP format. And in addition to the road survey data, we need some supporting data. One is traffic flow and vehicle operations. So this will come uh, from the site. So we will conduct surveys if there's no uh, secondary data available. So we conduct uh, sample surveys to get the uh, operate vehicle operating speed. So again, the 85th personnel speed we use and the traffic flow and the coded data and the uh, supporting data is processed using IRAP software, which will give the star rating, then safe roads investment plan. So we'll discuss in detail what the safer roads investment plan, and also it will give a summary of the road condition. So if we want to see, filter out and see uh, how, how, which all segments have, or what is the share of road, which is having poor delineation, we can find out. So a road condition summary is also given. And thirdly, implementation. So uh, if the road is, if, uh, if, if it is not the actual road we need to assess, if it's a design, so that is also possible. We can star rate a design also. Uh, before we uh, implement itself, we will be able to find out what star rating it would achieve after implementation. So that's about the uh, uh, process. So this is the uh, first step. This is an uh, image of a survey vehicle. So this is a network survey vehicle. Uh, so this has uh, cameras and GPS uh, facility and also distance uh, measuring units for uh, assessment. So uh, this type of large network type of survey vehicles are not possible all the time. So we can also use an off the shelf uh, action camera. So like a GoPro or a Sony action camera, which has a GPS facility. So generally for a smaller length, we use this kind of an action camera. Uh, if the assessment length is less than uh, 100 kilometer, let's say. So we use this kind of a smaller action camera, which can be mounted on top of a car and can be uh, driven on the road to record the uh, video and uh, in the coding stage, uh, 50 road attributes which are known to affect the likelihood and severity of a crash, as we have uh, discussed earlier, are recorded for every 100 meter. So it includes median type, number of lanes, uh, then what are the roadside hazards, uh, what is the horizontal horizontal alignment, if there are curvature present, then lane width, number of lanes, road condition, 
then a delineation whether it's adequate or not then width of paved shoulder then uh, the type of intersection so whether it is a three leg intersection or a four leg intersection or merge lane roundabout so different intersections have different levels of risk associated with it so definitely merge lane merge lane intersection has a lower risk compared to a four leg intersection so what are the types of intersection then uh, in urban environment if pedestrians are present uh, so we need to also look at the uh, footpath what is the type of footpath present or uh, what are the pedestrian crossing facilities present then if there are signals or uh, street lighting present so all these things so or 50 plus attributes uh, we extract from the survey video and uh, uh, so this is uh, a snapshot uh, from uh, a software called Romdas Data View. So this software is used to uh, code. So, uh, like there are many more, so we can even code without a software. So for larger projects, uh, this kind of this type of softwares are used. Uh, uh, softwares are used. Uh, so here uh, it's giving a stitched view of from the three cameras uh, using which the video of the road was recorded. And uh, on one screen, the coder will see this video and on the other screen, the coder will have a uh, form with drop down options where uh, different road attributes can be uh, selected. So what is the uh, area type for every 100 meter? What is the area type like different items? What is the uh, land use? What are the uh, roadside objects? What is the distance to the roadside object? What is the median type number of lanes, road condition, delineation? curvature gradient so several items are recorded using this form and uh, also uh, there are specifications and manuals available on uh, irab website so you can uh, go to resources uh, go to the irab website irab.org and go to resources and specifications there you have a survey manual then coding manual and uh, also upload file specifications available so you can uh, refer all these documents if you are interested uh, to use IRAP in your academics or any research. So uh, I was mentioning about the uh, need of some supporting data along with the uh, road survey data. So road survey data is the video recording. So supporting data includes uh, some demographic and economic uh, data points which include which is basically the uh, GDP per capita of the region where we are doing the assessment. Then we need the traffic volume data. So we need uh, the uh, annual average daily traffic of the motorized vehicles. Uh, then we need the operating speed. So operating speed, we uh, generally conduct a, a sample uh, speed survey and we calculate the 85th percentile speed and the mean operating speed uh, for the uh, sections we are assessing and we cannot do it on every 100 meters so we uh, do it on sample basis for different land uses and we uh, use uh, this uh, data and extrapolate it to the rest of the uh, sections which we are assessing then we need the uh, pedestrian and bicycle flow during the peak hour then we need the road crash data so this is some uh, secondary data which we require again uh, as i was mentioning earlier for star rating alone we don't need any crash data it is purely proactive and it is based purely on the infrastructure attributes or the risk possessed by the infrastructure which is built into the road but if we want to go a step further if we want to uh, get the safer roads investment plan so where the model will suggest countermeasures or treatments to reduce the risk or to improve the star ratings for safe roads investment plan so we need the uh, crash data again uh, distributed by road user category so how many are uh, motor uh, motorcyclists how many are pedestrians how many are vehicle occupants and how many are uh, like different road user wise we need and uh, finally we need the countermeasure cost so we have uh, uh, around 90 different items so cost of 90 different countermeasures for rural and urban environment are required so this cost will be used again in the safer roads investment plan stage and not in the star rating uh, stage so in safer road investment plan stage it will calculate the cost of the treatment suggested so here we will uh, give uh, in a standard format the unit cost for uh, 90 different countermeasures like for example uh, the cost for providing uh, concrete barrier on median or a metal crash barrier or improving delineation. So unit cost we provide and using that it will calculate the overall cost and give us the uh, total cost.
and again this uh, per capita gdp is used to uh, calculate the uh, economic payback so uh, a value of life so there is a value to uh, every life saved and uh, also uh, to every uh, serious injury prevented so uh, that is calculated using the gdp per capita so if a life is saved uh, so there was a world bank study it says that value of one life is 70 times the per capita gdp of that country so uh, in india i think uh, the per capita gdp i think around 1 lakh 10000 or 1 lakh 20000 so it is 70 times the per capita gdp so value of one life is 70 into 1 lakh 20000 so it comes around i think 1 crore so uh, that's the value of one life so when we say one life we can say that uh, there is an econo- economic payback of that much and similarly uh, there is some uh, uh, value for the serious injuries prevented so that's about uh, supporting data so uh, using the uh, coded data from the uh, survey video and the supporting data we prepare a an upload upload file so uh, it's in the excel format so here is an uh, example snapshot so here each row represents the data or each row has the data of one 100 meter segment of the road so if you are assessing a 10 kilometer road then the excel file will have 100 rows so 100 meter is one row so uh, uh, each item has a code so carry your type it's code 1 so code 2 is there so uh, then for different like similarly for different items there are basically it's a uh, number code so you can uh, find the, uh, the what the, find more about the codes in the ira coding manual available at uh the era website and after a upload an upload file is prepared a project is set up in vida which is the ira software so we give input of uh, the crash data and the road improvement cost and the economic details etc and then we process the upload file prepared here to generate the star rating and safe roads investment plan so uh so these are the uh, results what we get on a star rating map and again uh, i want to add the star rating is different for different road user groups so there is a separate star rating for vehicle occupants there is a separate star rating for uh, motorcyclists there is a separate star rating for pedestrians and there is a separate star rating for bicyclists so four different star ratings we get for each 100 meter segment of the road so there is no nothing like this particular road is three star we always give the star rating of 100 meter segment there is no uh, uh, star rating for nh1 nh1 is this star we cannot say that so generally we uh, how we present it is we say more than 60 percentage of this particular road is three star rated for vehicle occupants so that's in a tabular format we uh, present it so this is uh, example example star rating for star rating map for vehicle occupants uh, similarly motorcyclist pedestrians and bicyclist so here uh, uh, you can we can uh, like in the irap software we can zoom in and see uh, in more detail to uh, understand the risk so uh, here we can see uh, in the zoomed in view so there are some red colored sections black orange and yellow so black is one star red is two star orange is three star yellow is four star and uh, five star is green and we don't have one in this particular image so uh, red and red uh, sorry black is the highest risk red or two star is high risk and uh, orange or three star is medium risk and uh, yellow and green that is four and five star we say as low risk then this is another view uh, as i was mentioning so this is the summary of star rating so this is from one of our project in gujarat so we assessed around 2260 uh, km so out of that we can see that uh, this much percentage is five star this much is four star So around uh, 29 plus 2, around 31 percentage is three star or better. We can say 22 percentage is two star and 44 percentage is one star. So uh, this is how we present the star rating of a particular road. And also we can uh, do more detailed uh, analysis. So here uh, this type of this type of chart we call it as risk worm is available on uh, IRAP software Vida. so here each bar is representing 100 meter segment of the road on the uh, bottom axis we can see the cha- road change and on the uh, y axis is the star rating score 
so we can see some spikes in between so th those are some high risk sections so here this particular uh, location work open has got a uh, one star so there is a spike the star rating score is coming something around somewhere around between uh, 30 35 and 40 so uh, here again it shows uh, by color code what is the uh, components of this particular spike so here this particular color relates to vehicle occupant star rating score intersection so out of the total star rating score of 37.6 for vehicle occupants 23 is due to intersection so we can see this is the image for that particular location so there is an intersection which is directly opening to a high speed highway so that's a high risk situation so this kind of analysis is possible so looking at the uh, this kind of chart we can easily find out which are the high risk locations which would require a, safe, a safety intervention so uh, that's about uh, a different uh, 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 dif different types of uh, uh, views of uh, uh, star ratings available and then uh, coming to safe roads investment plan so uh, so we understood that uh, irap projects can provide a measure of the level of risk but it also it is also useful to know what type of solution could be introduced to improve the star rating and to improve safety so this is where safer roads investment plan or in short we say srip can help so uh, when it comes to road improvement uh, we would want to know whether we improve the safety of the road in an affordable way so how much is it going to cost and how effective would the upgrades be and how many deaths and serious injuries it can prevent so these are all the questions which can be an answered through the safe road investment plan which the software generates so uh, as i said the plan is based on more than 90 proven uh, road safety countermeasure options it gives you suggestions but uh, we uh, also need to uh, uh, like inspect at, at the site level and see if the suggested treatments are like viable uh, so sometimes it's possible that uh, the it's not technically possible to implement such a countermeasure or it's not required uh, actually so this kind of possibilities are there so uh, uh, IRAP assessment also gives an investment plan so which suggests countermeasure which says how the road safety can be improved in an affordable way so this gives a very tailor-made treatment so if for a particular location where intersection crash is high then the treatment will be given for the to address the intersection crash risk or another location where runoff crash let's say a curvature so where the runoff crash is very high so uh, obviously the runoff crash risk score is going to be high at that place so the countermeasure suggested for that place that particular location will be addressing the runoff crash risk. so it's a tailor-made kind of uh, countermeasures which will be suggested so this is the uh, uh, this is how uh, it will be generated or the uh, it will be available on vida so it shows the uh, overall summary again it's estimated for over a uh, 20 year economic analysis period so it says uh, the total number of uh, fatalities and serious injuries which is which can be prevented if all the treatments are implemented or and uh, over the Mm, the this is the num these numbers <coughs> show uh, how much how many fatalities it is prevented over a 20 year analysis period so then what is going to be the present value of safety benefits then uh, what will be the countermeasure cost for the uh, for implementing the treatments listed below and uh, we have the cost for saving one life uh, then also what is going to be the benefit to cost ratio so we can set different uh, benefit to cost ratio thresholds and we can prioritize different uh, treatments so if we set the bcr uh, lower then so many uh, uh, treatments would come up but if you want to bring it within our budget if you want to find out what are the uh, highest performing treatments we can set the bcr very high and only the treatments which uh, qualifies a higher bcr would come up there so bcr is benefitly uh, ba basically the ratio of benefit to cost so where benefit is the uh, economic payback or the economic benefit when a life is saved and cost is the implementation cost 
So again, um, we can uh, find out uh, exactly at which all locations uh, the different treatments are uh, recommended. So here we, in this summary table, uh, we just see the name of the treatment, the total length for which uh, the treatment is recommended for the total uh, out of the total assessed length and the economic uh, attributes of each. But uh, when we, uh, we we can click on that each of the treatment and find out the exact location and the uh, detailed uh, economic analysis of each for each location. So coming to a few uh, examples. So uh, this particular location, uh, it's uh, it is getting one star for pedestrians. So here, a speed is fifty five kilometer per hour. Um, there are no uh, street lighting. There are no pedestrian crossing facility. There is no uh, footpath. There is no paved shoulder. Then uh, mm, outside the road, there is no space for the pedestrian to walk. There is no informal footpath. Also, uh, good thing is only one lane per direction for pedestrians. It is good because they have to just cross one lane per direction. So it is a benefit for pedestrians. Then it's a straight road section and the, the uh, road condition is medium. So with all this, it is getting one star for pedestrians. Uh, so this is a similar situation. Only difference is there is some space available outside the uh, pavement for the pedestrians to walk. So here we can say it's an informal path. So it is uh, better than the previous one. So with this, it is getting uh, two star for pedestrians. Then coming to vehicle star rating, this particular road section, uh, 55 km per hour is the operating speed. It's an undivided road. There is no physical median. Then there are roadside objects or hazardous objects very close to the edge of the road. Delineation is poor. Uh, there is a property axis. Uh, there is a sharp curvature. Lanes are wide, but uh, paved shoulders are absent. The shoulder lane marking is like almost worn out and the road condition is medium. So with all this, this particular section is getting one star for vehicle occupants. An example of uh, two star for vehicle occupants. So here is an intersection. It's a straight road section. Uh, speed is higher than the previous 80 km per hour. Uh, there are trees present on both the side, but um, more than one meter away, I think one to five meter away. Then uh, 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 the intersection is present. Then lanes are wide, but there are no paved shoulder. Delineation is not complete. Only uh, center line is marked. Edge line is not. Edge lines are not marked. And road surface condition is good. So with this, uh, this particular hundred meter section is getting two star for vehicle occupants. Similar road, no intersection. Delineation is good. Edge line is present, and uh, it is getting three star for vehicle occupants. So this road is divided with metal crash barrier on the median, and uh, also uh, there is a service road. There are no objects nearby on the left side. On the right side, uh, street airports are there, but uh, with the it's uh, covered with the metal crash barrier that the vehicle won't hit directly on the street light poles. So no uh, severe hazardous objects. Service road is present. There is no intersection. It's a straight road section. Delineation is adequate. Payment condition is good. Uh, with all this, this particular section is getting five star for vehicle occupants. So basically what it says is uh, this road and the previous road, both are 80 km per hour speed. So this one is getting only three star, but this is getting five star. So for a road to have a particular speed, it should have, it should also have the required engineering infrastructure. So here in this one, head on collision risk is completely eliminated because there is a metal crash right on the median. So here at the same speed, there is head on risk also. So that is completely eliminated when we have a divided road. So uh, then objects are far away. So that risk is reduced. So different things together work like this and uh, we get a five star for this particular road section at a speed of 80 km per hour. So uh, that's about the uh, examples. So now we I'll quickly take you through some case studies. So this is one road which we assessed in uh, Karnataka. So SH20 Belgam uh, Yaragati road. So uh, we assessed it uh, in uh, 2015 and also in 2018, uh, uh, after 2019. So in the initial assessment, we can see on the map on the top, it was mostly one and two star. You can see black and red on the map and it was improved and the after assessment shows uh, 
mostly three star so uh, here on the chart on the left we can say earlier only one percent of the road was rated three star or better for vehicle occupants after improvement it has become 79 percentage for motorcyclist no road length was rated three star or better after improvement 44 percent of the road length is rated three star or better similarly we can see the improvement for bicyclists and uh, pedestrians also and uh, coming to the uh, performance of the road in terms of uh, reduction in crashes here we can see uh, uh, this charts 2015 to 2018 we can see how the injuries and the uh, deaths on the road have come down so uh, it has almost reduced by 50 percent earlier in 2015 there were 15 and 16 there were 49 and 50 deaths uh, annually it has come down to 22 23 levels after improvement so this is one uh, case study from uh, Karnataka so this is uh, just some uh, snapshots from the road so how improvements were done uh, uh, like mostly uh, it was like improvements for pedestrians and for uh, in the section of uh, quality, the improvements were, uh, improvements were done. So here we can see the satellite images of two uh, of one intersection before improvement and after improvement. So on the top one, we can see uh, uh, that the uh, intersection was skewed. There was no uh, special treatment here for intersection. There was no uh, like median separator or anything, no speed calming, uh, and also uh, there's no signage or anything. But uh, after improvement, we can see the, the geometry was slightly realigned. So earlier it was a skewed intersection. Now it's a 90 degree intersection, which is safer. And also uh, there are physical uh, median or splitter islands provided at the intersection area uh, to <coughs> reduce the crashes at intersection. And also there are protected right turn lanes provided. So if a vehicle coming from this direction, uh, from uh, like right to the uh, left want to turn to intersection there is a special protected lane here so vehicle can wait there and the chances of a rear end collision are avoided there also there are tabletop type uh, crossings provided for pedestrians which will also act as a traffic calming measure and also you can see uh, yellow colored strips or the transverse bar markings provided uh, before the intersection so these these are the treatments which are provided so we can also see how the star rating improved at this particular location earlier it was one star and two star for the different road users and after improvement it is like all road users are achieving a three star or better rating so this is another road from gujarat himmatnagar mehsana road so it was an undivided road earlier so after assessment it was uh, like made into a like four lane road with concrete median concrete barrier median so earlier this particular section was one star and after improvement it is three star. So another location uh, from the same road, the intersection quality was improved. Then a few uh, treatments uh, like we can see the before and after images uh, from the same road. So there was no metal barrier. So now it was provided. So uh, these are the uh, few of the case studies. So uh, also, uh, if you're interested, you can refer these uh, resources. Uh, first one is IRAP website, www.irap.org. Then we have uh, India RAP website, then uh, toolkit.irap.org. So it provides uh, free information on um, the causes and prevention of road crashes. And also it uh, um, explains in detail what are the uh, different uh, treatments possible and different crash types possible and vida.irap.org is the online IRAP software which is used to uh, produce star rating and strip and uh, also uh, uh, you can use something called a demonstrator in uh, vida so after you log in so there is a, you can uh, register there using your uh, email id uh, it's free so you can register and you can uh, uh, get access to use vida and uh, also there is a star rating demonstrator which uh, which you can uh, use to generate star rating for one particular road section so uh, so that's about uh, uh, irap uh, and also india rap learning center as part of uh, national road safety month so we are uh, launching a how to star rate uh, um, like learning material um, so it's a no-cost uh, guidance materials for students and research associates 
uh, those who wish to take up uh, IRAP for their uh, educational project or thesis. So uh, it is basically a guide uh, which says how to conduct survey coding and uh, processing to generate star rating for an investment plan. And again, in a very um, easy manner without using all the network survey vehicles or the coding softwares or anything, but by simply using your mobile phone and computer. So uh, we'll be uh, launching this uh, toolkit uh, tomorrow, that is 3rd of February at 4.30 PM. And uh, uh, the details are on uh, India app site. So if you want to uh, take part in this uh, launch program, uh, I think we have already uh, shared the invite with uh, NSS. So uh, I request the um, uh, NSS team to share it with the participants. If they are interested, uh, they can uh, see, uh, they uh, understand how it can be, uh, how IRAP methodology can be used for uh, their uh, engineering or master's thesis. So uh, that's from me. And uh, if you have any uh, questions. Thank you very much, sir, for giving us the opportunity to learn from your knowledge. It was indeed, indeed very enlightening to hear you all this while. Now we would like to move on to the question answer sessions. You can drop your questions in the chat box. Sir, we have few questions in the chat box, so I will just speak and you can you can answer those. The first okay, question sure. is: Can pedestrian crossover bridges be a good idea to increase the safety while crossing the roads? A pedestrian photo bridge. Uh, so it's again a very uh, subjective thing because in uh, urban areas it is possible uh, where uh, there is like a large pedestrian demand, so we can uh, like separate pedestrian uh, like great separate pedestrian so it's a good thing but again uh, we should make it in such a way that people will use it so uh, if a uh, pedestrian bridge is provided and if there is an option for people to cross at grade uh, definitely people will uh, a major share of people will prefer to uh, cross the road take that risk and cross the road at grade so if we are providing a facility then should have the standards so that people will be uh, like uh, uh, made like forced to cross it, or at least they'll enjoy using a foot orbit. So in urban areas, if it's a high high volume location, it can be provided with an escalator so that people don't have the uh, like um, effort to climb the stairs or walk uh, like additional uh, 200 meters across the road. So uh, with proper facilities, it is good. But often we see in highways and all, uh, we provide foot bridge, but it remain unused. Uh, also, if, if it is provided at an intersection, uh, people we cannot uh, make, do a fencing also to prevent uh, people from crossing. People will cross at the intersection. Of that and compliance is an issue, but otherwise, uh, risk-wise, it uh, totally uh, separates a pedestrian from the uh, vehicle, uh, like great separate the pedestrian from where the vehicles are. So, risk-wise, it is yes, but compliance-wise, uh, it's subjective. Thank you, sir. The next question is, is it possible to conduct a nighttime risk assessment using the software? No, actually there is no uh, nighttime risk assessment. So uh, IRAP assessment is done. Uh, the video recording is done with in good daylight. Uh, we do the recording in uh, <coughs> day hours only. So uh, in road safety audit, we uh, often see nighttime audit to see how the um, signs are or how retroreflective the markings are or how signals are working, all those things. But uh, for IRAP, there is no uh, nighttime audit. It's only daytime audit. Okay, so thank you. So the next is, uh, can we use vehicle uh, type other than car for data collection? We can use any vehicle actually. <clears throat> uh, so uh, it can be a car. So like larger network survey vehicles, which what we use for larger projects, if we have like thousands of kilometers to be surveyed, so we use a network survey vehicle, large one, but if it is like a very small length, like less than hundred kilometer, we use a smaller camera, so which can be mounted on a taxi or, uh, or some like smaller vehicle. But, uh, for academic purpose, uh, as I was mentioning, we are, uh, uh, launching, uh, study material or a, like, like guidance material for students. Uh, like purely for students we are launching not for any commercial projects so in that you can simply use a mobile phone and record it uh, sitting on your two-wheeler or bicycle or anything 
or even uh, while walking on the road. But in uh, uh, proper standard IRAP projects, we always use a like larger vehicle. Okay, so to the next question is with the increasing number of push and electric power bicyclists and the increased uptake in micro mobility devices such as electric scooters, there's a need on many corridors for either a third speed corridor or the operating speeds on the roadway or footpath needs to be lowered through speed limits. So what changes need to be made to footpaths to make them bicycle bicycle friendly and micro and micro mobility? So in uh, developed developed countries and all we can. Did we lose contact with Mr. Elmin or? Yeah, I think so. Just okay. He is not here. Mr. Ankur, can you please confirm if there's some issue? Yeah, just call him once if it is possible. I mean, he might not even know that he's disconnected. We have just thought he'll be joining. There's some network issue, so please wait for him. Uh, sorry, I uh, I think I got uh, dropped from the call. Yeah. So can you hear me now, Arvind? 
yes yes you are audible yeah, so like we had a question on what changes need to be made to footpaths to make them bicycle friendly and micro mobility you were telling yes. about that yes uh, so, um, uh, sorry about the uh, trouble so uh, i was saying uh, so uh, footpath um, and uh, bicycle facilities we can see in developing uh, like developed countries so uh, there is like in some countries we can see there's a larger share of the road space given to uh, the vulnerable road users like um, they have like shared use path for like slow moving uh, like like the bicycles and the pedestrians so they are the slow moving category are put together and uh, uh, the uh, motorized vehicles are like separated but uh, coming to a situation in india so in all the urban areas we don't have uh, like such space available so one uh, due to uh, like higher traffic a uh, larger share uh, is taken by the motorized traffic but if they can be uh, separated it will definitely bring down the uh, risk and also uh, uh, you are asking about the uh, e scooters and all but uh, speed wise i think it's uh, like it has a similar speed as of a normal motorcycle uh, so uh, i think uh, basically it will remain with the uh, uh, it should remain with the other motorcycle group uh, risk wise and also speed wise because if it is put with the uh, bicyclist and uh, pedestrians again uh, the risk for uh, bicycles and pedestrians would uh, increase uh, because of this uh, fast moving vehicle like put with them so uh, again uh, how do we increase the space for pedestrians or how we improve the space again it's a question so irap assessment uh, what it gives is it gives a general it doesn't give specific countermeasures it gives gen in general so it just says like provide a uh, bicycle facility or provide a pedestrian facility but again uh, uh, the viability of implementing those treatments is again uh, uh, to be made uh, like to be decided after uh, site visits and also it might not be viable in some cases so uh, from reduction of risk point of view uh, segregation of uh, pedestrians and bicycles would work but uh again how which we done is a, still a question okay thank you for that uh, next question is uh, can we use irap software vita for academic purposes if yes can you please explain the procedure yes uh, definitely you can use uh, irap for your academic projects and thesis uh, so it's the same model uh, which you will be able to use uh, so uh, the difference would be uh, for your thesis purpose you will be like doing a smaller section of the road from uh your uh, case study locality so uh, i was mentioning about the uh, like uh, the material the irap uh, the india rap uh, learning material which we'll be launching tomorrow so you can uh, uh, participate in the launch event so we'll take you through uh, how to register for that uh, so it's from the india rap website so there is a link for registering for that so we'll be uh, providing you the material and also uh, the instructions on how to do a star rating uh, uh, like <clears throat> in a very easy manner so for academic purpose and all how to do the surveys and all using your mobile phone camera and like which has a gps facility and also how to process data using your computer so with basic uh, things how to uh, get the star rating done so we'll uh, assist you on that so uh, i think uh, we have already uh, sent the invite to uh, nss uh, email id so you can uh, forward the invite to your participants also so that uh, they can also uh, take part in the launch program tomorrow yeah, sure we'll send the mail to everyone by tonight of the meeting link okay. the next question is does irap provide different rating for intersection and pedestrian crosswalks actually uh, intersections uh, different rating yes because we give star rating for every 100 meter segment so if uh, there is an intersection present in one particular 100 meter segment then the star rating for a uh, different road users on that particular segment will have the risk associated will include the risk associated with the intersections also so it's not the star rating of the intersection it's star rating of the entire 100 meter segment which has an intersection so again uh, to like further look at look into it in detail if you want to know what is the uh, risk caused by that intersection alone so uh, we can uh, download uh, data sheets uh, or the core data files from the uh, irap model and um, it's again excel file only so it will show the uh, like split of the total star rating score uh, to different road attributes so uh, like if intersection risk if we want to know we can um, and find out what what is the intersection risk out of the total risk 
Okay, so, so next question is, does IRAP considers number of traffic conflicts in the rating process? Number of, sorry, could you come again? Does IRAP considers number of traffic conflicts in the rating process? So traffic conflict means like uh, uh, we consider the traffic and also uh, if there are intersections, we consider what is the type of intersection and also the uh, side road volume or the intersecting road volume. So basically it is giving the uh, conflict like uh, two streams are meeting. So that is considered. Then other conflict is like conflict between uh, the different modes like uh, vehicle colliding, a larger vehicle colliding with a motorcycle or a uh, a larger vehicle colliding with a pedestrian or a bicycle. So that is already uh, considered in different crash types and that's already considered in the risk assessment. Okay, thank you. So the last question is, why rear end collision of cars not added to crash type list? Yes, uh, rear end collision of cars are not added to crash type list because as I was mentioning, uh, the list I have shown uh, only mentions the uh, crash types which can be addressed through road engineering measures. So rear end collision can happen due to different reasons. So like someone has suddenly stopped the vehicle on the road for some reason or the vehicle broke down. So uh, a vehicle coming from behind hit uh, like ended up in a rear end collision. So this is something which cannot be like prevented though uh, like more the maximum what we can do is we can uh, give street lighting to that location that the broken down vehicle is visible or a vehicle parked on the side is like in a better way visible to the approaching drivers and also uh, rear end collisions happen at intersections so uh, the uh, rear end collisions happening at intersections are already uh, addressed under intersection crash which is mentioned in the list so uh, some vehicle they want to turn to the right at an intersection will stop at the middle of the road and wait for a gap so uh, at that time, another vehicle can uh, hit this vehicle from behind. So that is also, an, also a rear end collision, but happening at an intersection. So this can be avoided. So this is already a part of the uh, the uh, list of crashes which I have shown. But otherwise, in general, rear end collisions uh, happening due to some other reasons are like cannot be addressed through road engineering measures. So that's why it's not a part. Okay, thank you, sir. There are no more questions. So Chaitanya, you may continue. Uh, we thank you, sir, for I sparing have... time. Chaitanya, Chaitanya, please. Oh. Yeah. Chaitanya, yeah. yeah, I have one question. Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. It's very enlightening. Chaitanya, <laughs> like, let ma'am continue. Uh, good evening to yeah. all of you. I'm here, uh, Premlata from LSS team. Uh, thank you so much, Engineer Alvin. So it was a very wonderful presentation. I was listening to your presentation. And uh, yes, good evening, Professor Puspa and other faculty students here. I have one small question. It was just coming to my mind if I'm allowed to ask this question. Uh, can I ask this question? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So I was just going through a project uh, in IIT Kharagpur. Like uh, when the drivers like they feel sleepy, so there is some way of like you know sensing the eyelids and uh, somehow uh, automatically controlling the movement of the vehicle so uh, can you just throw some light on that uh, like any research any sort of you know activities happening from irap side no uh, actually uh, from uh, irap side like like uh, there's nothing uh, uh, like uh, or towards uh, that uh, particular way of uh, uh, tackling it because uh, this is uh, uh, the way they sense uh, the vehicles sense the uh, uh, the fatigue or the like uh, the the closing eyelid of a driver yes. that is yes. more related to a vehicle engineering uh, measure. So IRAP is purely about uh, road engineering, uh, road engineering or the right. uh, transport right. infrastructure treatment. So uh, there's no research which has gone into uh, the other that, thing. that way. That way, uh, absolutely good. Thank you so much. Please carry on, Chantin. Very very much. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. We thank you, sir, for sparing time out of a busy schedule to grace the event with our esteemed presence. It was enlightening to our to your our audience to hear out you all this while. The information you shared regarding the IREP star ratings, the factors that decide the severity of crash was quite informative for all of our participants. The safer roads investment plans are something yeah. which are everyone should know about. The case studies you showed made the audience aware about the implementation of the society treatment in much better way. 
we would like to make an announcement that nssit roorkee will be organizing a workshop come project on mock road safety audit in collaboration with india rep the mock audit involves introduction to irap course and how to use the vida star rating demonstrator it will be followed by a mock audit all the starts with the workshop or orientation session which will be held on 11th february 2022 at 6 pm the registration link and other details will be shared soon on our social media handles so stay tuned for the like professor professor department of civil engineering with a specialization in transportation engineering to present the vote of thanks over to you ma'am thank you chaitanya so uh, mr elvin first of all thank you on behalf of the whole nss uh, team organizing committee members and also on behalf of all the attendees including myself for you know having this uh, very uh, informative uh, presentation and specifically i'm sure that students today they might have learned a very innovative and interesting approach rather than the traditional that they see is analyzing the crashes and all so this is something very handy to all of us just click pictures and then analyze it with the comprehensive uh, you know, parameters that you have listed over there and how we can uh, very comprehensively analyze and assess the road safety rather than going with the uh, a reactive approach so we can be proactive and then we can improve it and uh, based on the case studies that were presented they were also helpful in understanding that it's actually you know we can do the before and after implementation studies and then realize how uh, useful it is the simple up the simple and innovative and interesting approach how useful it is to just mitigate all these uh, crashes that could be happening just because of the engineering failures so i enjoyed it i am sure that all the participants who are from different backgrounds all of them are not from transportation background but the the um, the interesting approach that was used i'm sure everyone might have learned uh, a lot from today's presentations so thank you once again for you know taking your uh, precious time out for uh, interacting with us and i also thank all the participants for uh, being uh, present here today and also uh, making this a, a session an interactive one so thank you and also thank you the organizing team also for having me here thank you thank you ma'am thank you everyone for joining the session now we can end the session thank you thank you all bye bye thank you sir for joining